coming. Thank you. Thank you. We've been working on this product for a while, and I just didn't want to miss today. So <laughs> thank you for having me. And um, we got something great to announce today. Before we get to it, I've got a few updates uh, for you. Uh, the first thing I'd like to talk about is iBooks. You know, uh, we launched the iBook store less than a year ago. And uh, one of the milestones we've hit is that users have downloaded over 100 million books in less than a year from the iBook store. And today we're announcing uh, that Random House, the largest trade publisher, is bringing their over 17,000 books to the iBook store. They're going to be joining uh, the other five big guys. And uh, we have now over 2,500 publishers uh, distributing through the iBookstore. So we're really thrilled about getting Random House. So that's iBooks. Some good stuff happening there. Now, as you know, iBooks is one of our three stores, right? We have iTunes, the App Store, and iBooks. And they all use the same uh, Apple ID to, uh, to access them. And you have to have an account with Apple. Now, Recently, we just crossed 200 million accounts. And these are accounts with credit cards and one-click purchasing. Now, Amazon doesn't publish their numbers, but it's very likely this is the most accounts with credit cards anywhere on the internet. So we're really, really excited about this. And that's a big milestone for us. Another milestone is let's look at one of these stores, the App Store. We recently just paid out over $2 billion to the developers cumulatively in total. Developers have earned over $2 billion from selling their apps on the App Store. And again, a lot of people have tried to copy this. I think. We're way ahead, and you can understand why developers want to write their apps for the App Store. So we're very excited about that. And lastly, the iPhone. We recently shipped our 100 million iPhones. So a lot of stuff going on, and it's all good. Now, today we're here to talk about Apple's third post-PC blockbuster product. Right? That's how we think about these things. We started off uh, in 2001 with the iP iPod, right? our first post-PC product. And uh, we've been at it ever since. In 2007, we added the iPhone. And in 2010, we added the iPad. And every one of these has been a blockbuster. So we're uh, in a position now where the majority of our revenues come from these post-PC products. And when we introduced the iPad a little less than a year ago, we said it's our most advanced technology in a magical and revolutionary device at an unbelievable price. Now, people laughed at us for using the word magical, but you know what? It's turned out to be magical, right? And people weren't sure that it was an unbelievable price. Well, let me tell you, ask our competitors now. <laughs> and they'll tell you. So 2010 turned out to be the year of the iPad. 
And uh, let me give you a few statistics on that. We sold almost 15 million iPads in 2010. And remember, that's just nine months. That's from April through December, 15 million iPads. That's more than every tablet PC ever sold. <laughs> you know, the tablet PC did not invent the modern tablet PC. It crashed and burned. The modern tablet PC is the iPad. And it generated a little shy of $10 billion in revenue for Apple. $9.5 billion in revenue over nine months. We've never had a product that got off to that fast of a start. As a matter of fact, many have said this is the most successful consumer product ever launched. Over 90% market share. And our competitors were just <laughs> flummoxed. They went back to the drawing boards. They tore up their designs because they weren't competitive. And uh, so there was one uh, Samsung got out last year. And uh, you might have heard the quote that they said. As you heard, our sell-in was quite aggressive, around 2 million. In terms of sell-out, we believe it was quite small. <laughs> so a lot of these were probably on the shelf by the end of the year. Now, our app store has over 350,000 apps in it. Over 65,000 of those now take full advantage of the iPad. It's larger screen, it's faster processing, et cetera. And some of these apps are just fantastic. Apps from Autodesk, all sorts of magazines and newspapers and publishing apps. Just wonderful, wonderful apps. Consumption apps, creation apps, fantastic games, and a lot of apps for business in vertical markets like medical. The things people are doing here are amazing. And again, they're taking advantage of this incredible, magical user interface on a much larger canvas with more resources. And the apps that they're writing are just fantastic. There's never been anything, as an example, like this for photography before. 65,000 apps specifically tailored for the iPad. Now, that compares to our competitors who are trying to launch these days with, at most, 100 apps. And, and I think we're being a little generous here. So this is a huge advantage we have, and it's going just like this. Now, one of the things that enabled us to roll out this technology so fast was our Apple retail stores. They were built for moments like this. They were built to take new technology and roll it out and educate customers about it and be there when they have questions and issues. And uh, we have uh, uh, hundreds of Apple stores now. As you know, this is one of our newest ones in Chicago. And without these stores, I don't think we would have been as successful either. So we made a video about 2010 the year of the iPad. And I'd love to show that to you now. So let's roll the video.
great. So, we've gotten off to an exceptional first year. And uh, we'd like to build on that. What about 2011? Everybody's got a tablet. Is 2011 <laughs> going to be the year of the copycats? Well, I think if we did nothing, maybe a little bit, probably not so much, because most of these tablets aren't even catching up with the first iPad. But we haven't been resting on our laurels. Because in less than a year, we're going to introduce today iPad 2, the second generation iPad. So what is iPad 2? What have we learned? What can we improve? Well, it is an all new design. It is not a tweak design. It's not got marginal improvements. It's a completely new design. And the first thing is, it's dramatically faster. We have a new chip we call A5. Our chip wizards have come up with this. And it's great. It's dual core processors, right? two processors inside. And so we get up to twice as fast on CPU performance. But we've really gone all out on the graphics performance up to nine times faster graphics. The graphics on this thing are wonderful. Same low power as A4. We don't want to give up any of that legendary battery life. And even though others are starting to ship, I think this is going to be the first dual core tablet to ship in volume. So A5 is a really a, a quite an achievement and is going to give us something that's up to twice as fast on CPU performance, up to nine times faster on graphics, and the first iPad was no slouch. So a lot faster with A5. Second, we've built in some cameras for video. We've got a rear camera out the back, and we've got a front-facing camera out the front. We'll talk more about that in a few minutes. We've also built in the gyroscope that we have in the iPhone and the iPod Touch. Now, having built in all of this stuff, one of the most startling things about the iPad 2 is it is dramatically thinner. Not a little bit thinner, a third thinner. 33% thinner. That's what it looks like. So if you look at the numbers, when you look at the numbers, gone from 13.4 millimeters down to 8.8 .8 millimeters thick. It's dramatic. And for those of you that have iPhone 4s, the new iPad 2 is actually thinner than your iPhone 4. So we're incredibly happy with this. And when you get your hands on one, it feels totally different. And all of these other tablets are coming out, most of them even thicker than the original iPad, nothing even approaching this. In addition to thicker, it's lighter as well, going from 1.5 pounds down to 1.3. And you might not think that's a lot, but when you get down to 1.5 pounds, a tenth of a pound is a lot. And uh, it feels quite a bit lighter. And it's got an all new design. It's just beautiful. So this is what it looks like. It's really thin. And it comes in two colors, black and white. We're going to be shipping white from day one. <laughs> And to give you some scale, this is what it looks like. Again, you can just pick this thing up. It almost floats. Black and white, black or white here. Now, in addition to having both colors, we also have models 
that work with both AT&T and Verizon's 3G networking from day one. So we support both AT&T and Verizon. Now, here we are adding stuff into the iPad, uh, cameras and faster processors and gyroscopes and all this other stuff. Uh, and we've made it way thinner. Something's got to give. And uh, you would think that we would have to give up some of the iPad's legendary battery life. But our engineering team found a way. And we have the same legendary 10-hour battery life as the original iPad, with all of this extra stuff in it, and yet dramatically thinner. And again, that's over a month of standby. So 10 hours of battery life. Again, a lot of these other guys are coming out with substantially less. And this has been tried and tested by every reviewer. Uh, iPads get 10 hours of battery life. So we're really happy to keep that and uh, never let that go. Now, in addition to preserving the battery life, when we add all this stuff, we've also preserved the price. And so we're going to keep the same exact prices starting at just $4.99, same exact prices as the current iPad, yet with all of these new features, a dramatically improved product. Now, some folks are out there saying, well, they're only a little bit more expensive than us at $7.99. Just when you take a look at this matrix of these six models, five of these six models are less expensive than $7.99. OK, so they're, they've really moved up into the high ground. We only have one model that's more expensive than $799. And you add all of this together with over 65,000 apps tuned to the iPad. And we think 2011 is going to be the year of iPad 2. So just a beautiful product. So when are we going to ship it? April, May, June? No. On March 11th, that's a week from this Friday, we are shipping in volume in the US. And two weeks after that, on March 25th, we are shipping in at least 26 more countries including all of our high volume countries, except a few where we're still getting regulatory approvals. So 26 countries or more on March 25th. This thing's going to be everywhere in the month of March. And that is iPad 2. OK. We've got some really cool accessories. So there's two I'd like to tell you about today. The first one we've had a lot of requests for, HDMI video out. Teachers want to hook iPads up to their flat screen TVs in the classroom so that everybody can see, et cetera, et cetera. We have now an accessory cable that does just that. Right? It gets, delivers HDMI mirrored video output. So exactly what you see on the iPad, you see on HDMI. It provides output up to 1080p. Uh, it works with all apps. So anything you can see on the iPad screen, you see on HDMI. It's exactly what people want. It supports rotation. There's no setup or configuration whatsoever. And you can even charge your iPad while you're using it. So if you're giving a presentation, you're running low on batteries, just plug in your transformer and plug it right in. And here's what it looks like. Place to plug in an HDMI cable and a place to plug in your 30-pin connector to pass through the power to charge it, if you so choose. And so here it is on a HDTV. It's really simple. And it works great, and it's just $39.
So for people that need that, we've got a great accessory now. Something that's going to be even more popular, though, we call smart covers. For the original iPad, we did a case. Case is pretty cool. It can prop the iPad up for typing or for watching movies. Worked pretty well, except that we went to all this trouble to make a beautiful design, and we covered it up with this case. Right? But more than that, we added thickness and weight to the product, and we made it more difficult to use with some of the accessories. So we thought we could do better than this for iPad 2. And we started from the very beginning to design the case right alongside the product. And we have done that, but it's not a case anymore. It's a cover to cover the glass. It's a smart cover. And this is what it looks like. And it bends and folds around just like this as a typing stand and to watch movies on just like the the old one. Looks great with black. Looks great with white. And it even automatically, instantly wakes up the iPad from sleep when you open it and automatically puts the iPad to sleep when you close it. Now, how is this held on? Do we have some screws that you screw in? <laughs> what, what do we do? No. We use magnets. Our engineering and ID team came up with this idea of using magnets that grasp it and auto-align it so it's always in perfect alignment. And I'll show you a little video of this. You won't believe it. It's so cool. And you can remove it in a second. You can add it in a second. It adds minimal weight and thickness because it's just covering the top. It's got a microfiber lining that cleans the screen every time you move it, open it or close it. Again, it automatically wakes on open, puts the iPad to sleep when you close it. It's really easy to remove or change the cover. So you can have a bunch of them and pick which cover you feel like today and easily just put it on. And they come in polyurethane, which is used to make spacesuits, uh, or leather. And so I've got a little video that just shows you how this thing works. And let's run that video. One of my favorite little videos, it actually kind of reminds me of a Pixar short or something like that. <laughs> um, but as you see, we actually built magnets right into the iPad itself. And then there's magnets in the hinge for the smart cover. And it not only holds the cover on, but it auto aligns it. It's really cool. And of course, what would these cases be if they didn't come in colors? So we've got five polyurethane colors and five colors of uh, leather. And they're really, really beautiful. They look great with the black unit. They look great with the white unit. The polyurethane cases are $39. The leather cases are $69. And uh, we think this is going to, we think people are going to love these cases. So those are the two accessories I want to tell you about. Now let's go back into the iP iPad 2, and let's talk about the software that it's running. Because we have a new release of iOS called iOS 4.3. And to take us through some of the features of that, I'm going to ask my colleague, Scott Forstall, uh, to come up.
and take it through its paces. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. Good morning. So along with the new iPad 2, we're releasing the next version of iOS, iOS 4.3. And 4.3 brings with it some great enhancements and some new features. Let me walk you through just a few, starting with significantly increased Safari performance. Now, we took the Nitro JavaScript engine for Mac OS X and moved it on top of iOS. And now with this engine, iOS runs JavaScript more than twice as fast as before. This is fantastic. Next, iTunes home sharing. iTunes home sharing lets you get at all of your music, your movies, your TV shows that are stored in iTunes on your computer directly from your iOS device. You just wirelessly stream over your home Wi-Fi network right from your computer to your iPad, to your iPhone, and to your iPod Touch. So iTunes home sharing. Next, we have some really nice AirPlay improvements. You know, it was only a few months ago that we released AirPlay, and it is absolutely the best way to get your photos, your music, your movies and TV shows from your iOS device up to your television using Apple TV. Let's say you're watching a movie. This new icon appears, which is the AirPlay icon. When you tap on it, iOS automatically looks around your network and finds your Apple TV. There's no configuration needed. And when you choose Apple TV, you're now streaming your movie right to your television set. It's that easy. Well, we're making AirPlay even better in iOS 4.3. If you're sharing photos, you can now use all of the really cool built-in slideshow transitions from Apple TV right on your iPad or any iOS device. And also, now, in iOS 4.3, apps from the App Store and even websites can now AirPlay video in addition to audio. So some really nice AirPlay improvements. Now, this next one was a very popular request from our customers. Some customers have said they want, uh, and this has to do with the iPad slider switch on the sort of the top right of the iPad. Some customers have said they want to use that switch to really quickly mute their iPad, which is great, and that's the way we ship today. Other customers have said they want a really fast way to lock the orientation, right, to lock the rotation of the iPad. Let's say you're sitting on the couch and reading a book in iBooks, and you might lie down on your side, and they don't want it to rotate into landscape. And so they want a really fast hardware switch to do that. So in iOS 4.3, we're enabling users the preference so they can choose to assign whichever of those two functions they prefer to that slider switch. Next is personal hotspot. Now, this is a feature for our iPhone 4 customers. Personal hotspot lets you share your iPhone's 3G internet connection over Wi-Fi to other devices. So now, Getting on the internet from, say, your laptop is as simple as using Wi-Fi to connect to that Wi-Fi personal hotspot from your phone. Next, as you saw, iPad 2 comes with these new cameras on both the back and the front. And to go along with these new cameras, we've built in some new software, starting with Photo Booth. Now, those of you who have used Photo Booth on the Mac know how incredibly fun it is and you're going to love it on the iPad. You know, let me just go ahead and give you a demo. So here I have an iPad 2, which is mirrored up there. And let me go ahead and launch Photo Booth. So the first thing you'll see here is that iPad 2 is so fast with the A5 chip that we're looking at nine live video streams at once. And we can do this, and we have plenty of CPU and GPU to spare. Uh, let me go ahead and choose one. I'll choose mirror. Uh, let's see if I can line this up right, like this. And you can you know, grab your head and pull it away. Uh, <laughs> you, you can take a picture of yourself doing it. So let me see if I can do that. So here I am. 
And <laughs> all right, I took two. Uh, and then you can share that with your friends. Let me go back, and here's thermal. Uh, so you can see what the predator would, how they would see me. Uh, and let me do one more. Let's say you're in a Picasso kind of mood or some really bad uh, surgery. So you can also take a finger and move the effect around yourself. So I can go there. There. <laughs> Lovely. That's what I used when I met my wife. Right? Uh, so you can see that Photo Booth is incredibly fun uh, on, on the iPad 2. And I know that my kids have spent countless hours playing with it on, on the Mac, and I know they're going to absolutely love it on the iPad. That's Photo Booth. Next is FaceTime. FaceTime is the best and easiest way to video conference. We support it on the iPhone, and we support it on the iPod Touch, and now we're bringing it to the iPad. You can FaceTime between two iPads, between an iPad and an iPhone or an iPod Touch, and between an iPad and a Mac. Let me go ahead and just give you a demo. All right. Let me launch FaceTime here. You can see I have my buddy list on the right. So I'll go right. So I'll go ahead and choose Michael. So it's calling uh, him, and in a second he'll answer. How you doing? Doing great, Scott. How's it going? Oh, it's going great. I was just giving everyone here a demo of FaceTime. You can see already that the size of the iPad is just ideal for video conferencing. I mean, the person's face is a great size. You can see all their expressions. It feels very personal. Uh, you can also use both the front camera and the rear camera. So, Michael, why don't you flip to the rear camera and show us what you're looking at? Sure thing, Scott. Okay, Michael's been locked in a, a very sad cafe. Uh, <laughs> I'm Free so sorry. <laughs> now, you can imagine, you know, if, if Michael had children or something, this would be fun to look at. <laughs> Thank God. I, I told him. I told them to bring a, a box of puppies, but I guess he didn't. Uh, anyway, you can also move the, the pip around to get it out of the way. So it's sort of pong. You can move it wherever you want. Uh, and, but FaceTime on this really is a great experience. And we can't wait for people to get their hands on it. And of course, from day one, you can FaceTime from your iPad 2 with all the iPhone 4 customers out there. Thanks a lot, Michael. Thanks, Scott. And that's FaceTime. So these are just a few of the great enhancements and features that we're bringing out in iOS 4.3. iOS 4.3 will be a free download on March 11th. It supports all iPads. It supports GSM, iPhone 4s, and iPhone 3GS, and third and fourth generation iPod Touch. And that is iOS 4.3. Thanks. That's great. Thanks, Scott. Now, in addition to these two new apps being built right into iOS 4.3, we've got two more apps we're introducing here today. And we like to do applications. We like to do applications because it gives us feedback you know, for what it's like to be an app developer so we can make the system better and better and better for all developers. But also, it can set the bar. It gives third-party developers something to say, wow, if Apple can do that, I can certainly do better. And so it, it sets the bar pretty high for developers out there. And uh, so there's two apps we're introducing today. And the first one is iMovie for iPad. Uh, and we have a long history of video editing. Uh, we, we're the largest supplier of video editing software in the world, we think. And uh, iMovie for iPad is in that tradition. It's got a precision editor on it, multi-track audio recording. This is not a toy. You can really edit movies on this thing. It's got new themes. You can airplay your video right to Apple TV from the application. 
You can share your videos in HD with some really popular sites. And it's a universal app, so it will also run in the iPhone. And to demo this, I'd like to ask Randy Ubelos, who's our chief architect for video applications, to come give us one of his great demos. Randy? Thanks. Thanks, Steve. So last summer, we brought iMovie to iOS, and it was a big hit with our customers. Today, we've got a new version that really takes advantage of the big screen of the iPad and the extra uh, horsepower that it has. I'd like to show it to you. When we start up the app, you can see our really nice new home screen with the old time theater, really gorgeous display here. You can see each of your projects has its own little poster. There's a thumbnail of the movie and the poster is based on the theme that's in the project. And you can just scroll back and forth between these. Works great in portrait. It also works really nicely in landscape. And this looks really great on the retina display of the iPhone 4 and the iPod Touch as well. We can scroll back here. I'm just gonna tap on this one project and we can edit. And you can see we've got the nice editing interface here. I've got my timeline down below. It's fully multi-touch so I can zoom in and out. I've got my nice video bin. I can see all my videos and a nice big viewer for looking at my video. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of editing. So I'm gonna scroll down here. Now I can actually use, there's a camera button on the right that I can use to, to use the camera of the iPad 2 to record directly in the timeline or I can go from my video bin. Now I can just press and hold on a clip and I can skim my finger back and forth to take a look at the video before it's been placed into the timeline. Or I can just tap on a clip and then I get two handles. So I can actually choose the segment of the video that I want to put in. And we have two different clips here. I'll put in a piece of that one. Select the second clip. We have another shot of that, the girl going in the water. So we'll pick kind of a corresponding position there. Tap that, drops into the timeline. And we've got a cross dissolve between if we want to do a more precise edit, for the iPad 2, we have a precision editor. So I can do a reverse pinch apart, bring up the precision editor, and now I can see all the content of the clip on the left before and after the edit, and all the content for the clip on the right. I also have full control over the transition. I can double tap, and we can set that to none, so that'll make a cut. I can press and hold on the top dot, and that allows me to choose the point within that video where we want to end. So we'll pick a spot kind of where she goes out over the water. Now I can press and hold on the lower dot and do the same thing. So we can make this kind of look like just a cut in the same shot. I can press and hold on the center dot as well and I can roll the edit. I can add and subtract frames from both sides simultaneously. When I want to take a look, we just back up a little bit and hit play. Really easy to, to keep going and adjust your edits to get things just the way that you want. And with a pinch, we close it up. Now one of the big feature requests we had from users was audio. We've done a lot of work in that area. I have a nice audio button here that I can press and I see audio waveforms for all of my clips. These clips, have all, uh, several of these clips have been muted which you can see from the audio that's dimmed out. If I want to turn the audio on a clip, I just double tap, brings up my clip settings. I can turn the audio on. I can also turn the volume up and you'll actually see the waveform get larger. It actually shows me the change in the volume level that I've done. This next clip down here, we've got this guy going off on a zip line. It'd be great to add a sound effect there. I'm gonna switch over to my audio bin, and we have sound effects here. There are over 50 sound effects that come with iMovie for use in your movies. Let's zoom down here, we've got this great jet flyby. Go ahead and add that, and when it adds, using the audio waveforms, I can see the audio waveforms not quite lined up with that clip. I'm just gonna press and hold my finger on top of that audio, and just drag it back, line it right up on the clip. Now I know it's right in place. Let's take a look. Really easy. We've got three audio tracks in addition to the background audio track for use for sound effects and we have a voiceover recording system that allows me to record a voiceover right on top of my movie. Now we've been looking at one of our new themes. We have three new themes. It gives us a total of eight. This one's called Simple. And as you might imagine, it's simple. It's got plain white test, text uh, and just fade through black transitions. Looks really nice. We also now have uh, titles over stills. Speaking of stills, we also do face detection on stills. So when you pl one, place one in your timeline, the Ken Burns effect is automatically set up so all the faces stay in frame. Scroll back to the beginning here. 
And I'm gonna bring out my project settings and we'll switch to one of my other new themes called Neon. It's a really bold theme. We've got this fade out to black as well. When I tap away, you can see the really nice bold opening title that we have. We also have a great tr uh, theme transition, really nice lower thirds. The music automatically switched when I switched themes, which is the, the default, but I can mix and match. So I can go back to my audio bin, I can choose a song from my iTunes library, or I can choose one of the other eight theme songs for the other themes. We'll go ahead and choose modern, drop that into the background. And easy as that to change the music. Now once I've put the project together and I wanna look at it, I can come back out to the marquee. You'll notice that the poster frame has changed to reflect the neon theme that we switched to. I can use the share button down below. If I tap on that, you can see a bunch of our new sharing options. YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, CNN, iReport, direct sharing from within iMovie, and those are all done in high quality HD. I can also use the play button to play directly to AirPlay, or I can play on the device. Let's t take a look. And that is the new version of iMovie on the iPad 2. Thanks. Thanks, Randy. It's awesome. 1.3 pounds. It's, it blows my mind, this stuff. Precision editing. Sending HD video around to all these sites with one tap. Just a lot of great features in an app that we're going to price at just $4.99. And it's going to be on the App Store on March 11th. So that's iMovie. <laughs> Next up is something I think you're also going to really like, which is GarageBand for iPad. GarageBand for iPad is remarkable. It's got touch instruments. You can plug in a guitar and play real instruments if you want, but it's got touch instruments that I think are going to be a huge hit with our users. Guitar amps and effects, eight track recording and mixing, over 250 loops you can add to your songs. Uh, you can email files around of your song to anybody, and it's compatible with the Mac version. So if you want to start something on your iPad and finish it on the Mac, no problem. So to give us a demo of GarageBand on iPad, I'd like to invite Xander Soren, who's our Director of Music Marketing, to do that right now. Thanks, Steve. I'm blown away with this stuff, you know? Playing your own instruments, or using the smart instruments, anyone can make music now in something that's this thick and weighs 1.3 pounds. It's unbelievable. So, GarageBand for iPad. Great set of features. Again, this is no toy. This is something that you can really use for real work. This is something that I cannot tell you how many hours teenagers are going to spend making music with this and teaching themselves about music with this. GarageBand for iPad, $4.99. It will be on the App Store on March 11th. So, iPad 2, an amazing product, faster, lighter, thinner, cameras and gyro, iOS 4.3 with built-in FaceTime and Photo Booth, 
iMovie and GarageBand for $4.99 each on the App Store. Over 65,000 apps that have been tuned for the iPad to take advantage of all its resources. 3G on AT&T and Verizon from day one. The same 10-hour battery life, the same prices starting at $4.99. Black and white, smart covers. We think 2011 is clearly going to be the year of iPad 2. Now, We made a video that I'd love to show you, and so let's go ahead and roll the video. <laughs> 